Hi Year 10, I'm going to talk you through today the PowerPoint that I used yesterday um, with the, cl the class that was working in, in school when we were looking at the June 2017 paper looking at questions 4, 5 and 6. And this paper focuses on an article by a lady called Lib Libby Purvis, uh, Don't Dread Downsizing, A Smaller Home Makes You Feel Like Newlyweds. Um, I thought you might be interested just to get an idea in your head of Libby Purvis and her husband. Uh, this is a picture of them here. As you can see, they are a couple in their late middle age. Um, so that will give you some kind of uh, idea of who they are, the sorts of people that they are. Before we move on to look at the article in much more detail, I wanted just to outline for you the importance of thinking about where the texts that you are given were originally published. So we're told that this article was originally published in the Daily Mail and in a magazine called Woman and Home. Well, if you look at the June 2020 front cover of Women and Home, you can see that this doesn't look like a magazine directed at uh, young women particularly. Uh, the lady on the front cover is uh, probably the sort of target demographic or maybe a slightly more glamorous version of the tar target demographic. So that's the sort of audience that this article is aimed at. Uh, and if we think about the Daily Mail as well, I need to be careful not to say anything too rude about the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail loves to say rude and nasty things about teachers, so not my favourite paper. Um, but what you do need to know about it is that uh, it is the most widely circulated and widely read newspaper in the, in the UK. So it kind of is designed to appeal to um, kind of like the typical Brit out there. Uh, and there's a funny little um, uh, extract from a, a comedy that used to be on TV about 20 years ago that I've included in the bottom left-hand corner here. So this is the text. Um, if you haven't read it yet, so I suggest that you pause the PowerPoint and you take a little bit of time to read it. And you should be getting the hang of these by now. Question four and five are very simple, select and retrieve questions. Uh, there are normally five or six answers um, to these questions, so it's quite difficult for you to get them wrong. So you just need to um, very, very briefly see if you can um, answer this question. Don't use too many words. You can use your own words or you can use quotations, but you just need to do it quite quickly without making a fuss. I will leave you to do that now, and the answers are on the next slide. There you go, you can find out whether you were right or not, but any of these things would do. So most people, in the few times that I've used this exam paper and we've set it as a mock or that sort of thing, pretty much everybody picks up the marks for this question. This one is a little bit more tricky actually and uh, there are only three correct answers that you um, that you can get for this and quite often people manage to provide the wrong answer for this um, but have a go so make sure you look in the right lines from lines five to nine identify a phrase which shows that the writer had too many belongings okay so just have a go for that and pause it I'll show you the answers on the next slide Okay, so you get a mark for no one needs four copies of the Mayor of Casterbridge, um, wardrobes full of random oddities, and no one needs three snorkel sets. Um, quite often I find that people put down the quote, um, yards and yards of dusty books, but unfortunately you don't get a mark for that. So um, there you go, you should have been able to do question four and five very quickly. So I just want to recap for you um, what evaluation is. So this is one of those slides that I've cut and paste from something that the exam board sent me. So you're focusing on how well, not how. You need to use evaluative language. So you've got to show that you have an opinion and make a judgment about the text. So powerfully, effectively, cleverly, successfully. And then the exam board advice, um, and it's referenced in the mark scheme, is that you try to focus on ideas, events, themes and settings. 
Okay, um, this poster, I've shown it to you before. Um, it is worth zooming in on and having a little look at because it's got it's packed full of some good advice for how to evaluate if you're not quite sure. So I always like to include this. I've shown you this one before as well. So just a reminder that question three is close analysis. We're not doing that today. What we're doing today is we are flying like eagles. We are giving an overview. We are evaluating. So that's what you need to be doing. Just like we did the last time we had a look at question um, six together, I have suggested that one of the ways to help you access this question is to actually reword the way that the question is phrased. So I would rewrite this question as evaluate how successfully the writer comes across as positive about moving to a smaller house. And then in the peach colour box, I've broken that down even further so you can be absolutely clear about what it is that you're writing about. Just some of the normal stuff that I remind you of as well. Remember, you're given three sides, but you don't need to answer. It doesn't have to be three pages that you write. About a page and a half, two pages is plenty for most people. So, as the exam board have said, we need to think about settings, ideas, themes and events. So, in the other papers that we've looked at so far, so when we were thinking about the Shackleton extract and also when we were thinking about the Jack Munro extract, um, settings and events were reasonably easy to tune into. And they do tend to be in most paper, papers that we look at, but I think that, that Settings are okay for this one, but events are maybe a little bit difficult, but the ideas come across quite clearly um, and the themes that sort of run through this text. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to just pause the, the slideshow for a little bit and try and make some notes, having reread the article, what settings are mentioned. Okay, how, how do the settings help Libby Purvis come across as positive about moving to a smaller house. What kind of ideas or themes come through? So she goes on and on about decluttering and there's ideas about um, things springing back to life and that kind of thing. Um, and then what are the key events um, in the text? And I guess I think for this one, that's perhaps um, the hardest bit, the events, because the whole thing is about an event, isn't it? It's about them moving house. Um, but so pause the slideshow, spend a few minutes just thinking about the settings, ideas, themes and events, and then you'll have a good basis to start your answer. So here are some of my ideas. It's not exhaustive, but if you were struggling with that, there's some ideas here of the sorts of things that you might reference. Um, I'll leave you to have a look through that in your own time or pause the slideshow so that you can read through that. And now we've come to the part of the video where if you haven't had a go yourself yet, it would be a really good idea to once again pause the slideshow and have a go at writing your own answer. So a reminder that in the exam, you would have about 20 minutes to write a response to this question. Whilst you're learning and getting used to formatting your um, answers, spending half an hour, 40 minutes trying to compose an answer to this question is absolutely fine. But do just bear in mind that when you are in the exam, you will only have around 20 minutes to do it. Okay, so this is the one that I wrote yesterday when I was in school with my class. Um, I did this in about 15 minutes, I think. Um, I'm going to read it to you just in case it's not particularly clear because uh, I know my writing's a bit scrawly and the photo's a little bit blurry. So one way the writer effectively demonstrates her overwhelmingly positive attitude to downsizing is when she cleverly compares it to being like a newlywed. She makes this reference with connotations of youth, fresh and positivity, freshness and positivity in the headline and also in the final lines of the article, thus persuading the reader very well that downsiding is a fantastic life choice. 
The settings Purvis mentions in the article cleverly reveal her positive feelings. She skillfully contrasts her sprawling home in Dunwich with the small but shipshape uh, new accommodation. Often the adjectives reveal her underlying feelings. The Dunwich house is dusty with drifts of lifetime archives, but once she has decluttered, once forgotten items are rediscovered and relabeled as treasures. A key idea that is woven through the article very effectively is that downsizing is a way of detoxifying uh, her, that surroundings and their new life is revived and refreshed. This idea of going back or returning to a more fun and energised period of their lives is captured in the description of mementos which spring back. The piece as a whole is packed full of advice and guidance for the people who might be considering downsizing too. This advice is frequently distributed. Take a deep breath, categorise things, face it. These phrases are upbeat and positive and successfully encourage the reader. But they do also acknowledge quite clearly that for some people downsizing and decluttering might be tough. Whilst the article is successful in the main part and would appeal to rich middle class people like Purvis herself, to less wealthy people the article is less successful. They might resent the flippant references to bunging stuff away. Okay, so that was the one that I wrote in 15 minutes. You can see that one of the reasons that this would be a very good response um, is that um, it has used lots of quotations frequently. So you can see that I've underlined in red where I've used quotations. And what I've done with my use of quotations is I've, I've, I call it peppering. I don't know if any other English teacher in the land uses that phrase, but I kind of sprinkle my, my quotations in very sort of brief bursts throughout my analysis uh, and that helps me hit the assessment criteria and it means that my commentary about the text um, is very very rooted in the text. Um, you can see uh, in green there's not that much green in this actually but you can see that in green is where I've talked about the settings and the ideas okay so there are three broad references I think possibly there are some other references to ideas as well uh, but perhaps I could have um, made more of talking about the events in the article um, I think that that is perhaps something that could be improved with this response um, but you can also see that where I've put blue uh, underlining it's where I've used evaluative wording okay so you've got to be getting uh, things into your response such as successfully powerfully masterfully or unsuccessfully or quite clearly uh, and you can see that I've done that very well as well. Okay so this is the mark scheme just a reminder that if you're trying to get yourself a grade four you need to be trying to get at least seven out of fifteen. Okay so and just a reminder that you need to offer judgment so if you're not using those words like successfully, powerfully you're not going to hit the mark scheme. This is the indicative content. So these are the sorts of things that the mark scheme says that you might have written or what they would expect you to write to access the highest marks uh, or some of the marks. They wouldn't expect you to, to reference all of these things. So maybe four of these ideas, five of these ideas would be plenty to get yourself right up in the, in the top band. And equally, if you haven't said these things, but you've said valid points, um, then they would be... Um, rewarded as well. Sometimes if you're getting really stuck on an exam paper, particularly if it's a past paper and the mark scheme is available, it's worth you, you know, having a look at that mark scheme just so that you kind of get your brain into how the examiner thinks and the sorts of things that they're looking for. So hopefully that's been of some help. We're going to look at some exemplar responses to question six now, just to give you an idea of um, kind of what works and what doesn't. So this is the first exemplar response. This one scores six out of 15. So it would be at that really frustrating point of being a, a level three, just beginning to get close to a level four. Um, but you can see from the way that I've highlighted it, 
that one thing they haven't really done enough of is they haven't used evaluative comments. So they haven't really fulfilled what the question asks them to do. Their use of quotations, highlighted in green here, is reasonable. That's enough to get it into a level three. Uh, but it doesn't really talk about the, the settings or ideas. And so that kind of... Um, holds it back okay so there's not enough evaluation and it doesn't really reference the um, settings ideas themes and events uh, enough to get it a better mark than that okay so you can see that this is quite a weak answer it does get some marks it's 3 out of 15. So they set off on the right foot by using some evaluative language, successfully achieved. And they do use one quote. That quote is a little bit long, but they do use a quote. And it does kind of link back to the question. So it's not extended enough to get into the next band, but it fulfills the criteria of the question. And this is the best exemplar response um, of those I'm sharing with you today. You can see just from glancing at the um, highlighting uh, that it does plenty of what you need to do. So it, it quotes regularly and the quotes are quite well controlled. Uh, it uses lots of evaluative language. So it really shows that it understands what you need to do for this question. And there are regular references in each paragraph to the settings, ideas, themes and events. And that's one of the things that really helps lift this response. So one thing that I would urge you to do with your own um, past paper attempts is have a go at using highlighters just to check that you are quoting, you are using evaluative language and that you are referencing settings, ideas, themes and events. I hope that has been helpful to you. Any questions, please get in touch in the normal way.